Next in the tank, to Melbourne besties with a thirst for success. We've always shared this passion and overall we are our brand, so we are those girls. Hi, I'm Lauren. And I'm Eleanor. And, and we're, we're the founders, founders of, of Those Girls, girls Ice Tea. Tea. Today, we're asking for a $70,000 investment in return for 15% of our business. For the past 12 months, we've been selling our iced tea at festivals and markets throughout Victoria. During this time, we've received incredible feedback and we're now looking to grow those girls' iced tea into a new trendsetter for Australian drinks that represent a lifestyle, not just a beverage. We see unlimited potential for our brand, but in order to take those girls to the next level, we have three steps that we need to complete. Step number one, we need to bottle our product so that it's readily available for retail. Step number two, we are gonna expand into a ready to drink health range, which will include detox iced tea, detox water, and tea smoothies. Step number three, we are gonna retail a Those Girls Iced Tea subscription box, which will separate us from the competition and strengthen our brand. Those Girls Iced Tea is setting a new trend in the Australian beverage market and... We would, we would love, love for a shark to jump on board for the ride. <laughs> now, who would like to try some? Well, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. And that was $70,000 for 15%. Correct. Yeah. OK. Today we have a homemade lemonade. We have a pineapple sun tea. We have a blueberry and mint. We have a lime and mint mojito. And we have a strawberry and rosemary. And they're all based on teas? They are, except for the homemade lemonade. Right. We have an option for people who aren't big on tea. We want to appeal to everyone. And the mojito, is that a real mojito or...? It's a virgin mojito. Ah. We have a green tea base <laughs> instead of alcohol. Do you have anything else behind that counter you can throw into that? <laughs> <mojito>? <laughs> Maybe. I'll try the lemonade Lemonade? Then. Sure. So is this how you serve it at festivals? This is how we're currently serving it. So this is our setup for the festivals. Strawberry. Thanks, Eleanor. You're welcome. Would you like the lime and mint mojito? Sure, thank you. You're welcome. Awesome, thank you. Oh, very nice. So we've got your own bottles. We have one for Andrew. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. One for Steve. Oh, beautiful. Thanks very much. Oh, look at that. You've made it if you're a cartoon. I actually think it's really good. Actually, really good job. I think it's really nice. Oh, thank, thank you. You don't understand how much that means to us. <laughs> I don't like iced tea. I never have. I actually really enjoy enjoying this. Thank you. Thank you. How much would this cup have cost me? This costs you $5 and it's a 500 ml cup. And what does that cost you? At the festival scene, it's costing us on average 70 to 80 cents per cup to make. Including the cup? Including the cup and the straw and the ice. The bottles are just samples, right? Because you don't make them in bottles. They're yet. currently samples. Um, we've worked on the artwork. We've developed all of that ourselves. Could you tell us about the ingredients? Of course. The ingredients vary for each flavour. So we work with either a green tea or a black tea base, and then we use fresh fruits to flavour them as well. Now, is it sweetened? We do add a little bit of sugar. How when much you... sugar's in it, please? depending on the flavour, between 15 and 20 grams for the 500 ml cup. Steve, since when have you worried about the ingredients in what you drink? Sugar. Sugar. And that is why we do want to extend into a health range so that we can offer people a sugar-free variety as well. OK. Well done. It's, it's really you. good. Well Thank done. you very much. What are your sales? We are currently just under 12 months old and in that time we've brought in just over $51,000. What would you say a good day at an event with sales would be? One we do regularly is the Queen Vic Night Market, which in Melbourne's really large. It gets about 30,000 people on average per night, depending on weather. Yep. And at the moment, we're doing 700 cups a night. 700, which how much in dollars? 3,500 for the day. That's a good result. Well done. We're happy. <laughs> <laughs> have you approached a bottler? We have had contact with a bottler. We're working towards a cost price of $1.65 per unit. And so what would you sell that for? We'd be looking at a wholesale price of around the $2.60 mark per unit. And retail? Retail, we'd be initially going for a recommended retail price between $4 and $4.20. And how does that go with your competitors? That does seem a bit steep. 
In Melbourne, in the local gourmet cafes, etc., it's on par. As for supermarkets, if we can ever get to the point where we're at that size and we can increase the numbers that we need to make, we're definitely going to be decreasing our unit cost. Are the next steps finding sales distribution? We do need to or find distribution. manufacturing? Both. So we have a distributor that we want to use that we've started to make contact with. And we're now finalising our formulas, which we hope to do in the next month. When you talk about finalising your recipe, what you're saying, I think, is that whilst you've got the taste right, you have to get consistency in very large quantities, and you haven't quite done that yet. We are doing it at the moment, but the trouble with that is that once we have to pasteurise it to get the shelf life, the heat used to do that can change the flavour a bit. We want it to be perfect. Perfect's good, but eventually you're going to have to draw a line in the sand and say we're done, otherwise you're never going to manufacture a product. Trademarks? No. Get onto that. Yes, we need to. Make it a priority. Okay. Um, imagine building all this equity and then finding out that you can't use a name because someone else has it. The margins on your, your stall are great. Your margins in your bottles aren't so great. So it's sort of like going, wow, that's a ripper. Mm, that's a problem. And not only that, it's such a crowded market. I'm sorry, guys, I'm out. The thing that's missing for me is you're not trademarked yet. The ownership of your IP is really, really important. I'm out. Look, I think you're terrific. I love the tea. I, I can't stop drinking it. And honestly, if you ask my wife, daughter, my family, all I drink is herbal teas, and I'm always looking for interesting, creative iced teas. They're hard to find. But I think it's a bit early stage as a business. I wish you well, but I'm out. Lauren and Eleanor, I think you two are fabulous. Thank you. This is what young Australian entrepreneurship is all about. It's about energy, passion. I can really connect with you because I found, just like you found your passion, I found mine many, many years ago. Oh, yeah. Your margins for the bottle drink at the moment don't work. By the time you add a distributor in there, they're just not working. Once you get that scalable, I think you guys are so investable, it's not funny. But I think right now you're not quite there. I'll be a customer of your product. I love what you're doing, but I'm out. You are actually nice people with a good business with oozing brand presence. But it's early and it's in a tough spot. You haven't perfected your bottling. I'm on the fence. I'm, I'm inclined, not too sure what to do. Friends Lauren and Eleanor want $70,000 for 15% of their iced tea business. Four sharks are out, which means Steve Baxter is their last hope for a deal. You are actually oozing brand presence, if you know what I mean. But it's early and it's in a tough spot. You haven't perfected your bottling. I'm on the fence. I'm, I'm inclined, I'm not too sure what to do. Absolutely love to maybe use you two together. If that's an option, if you guys are willing to, if you both like each other. No. I don't really like him that much. Tell you what. <laughs> that would be a great partnership. Yes. By the way, we, we are valuing your passion. Oh, yeah. Very much. I mean, when, Thank when, you. when Thank people you. like you come in here, I think all of us, we're looking to back and invest people first and product second. Yeah. Passion Thank and you. character. Thank you. All right. 
15%, you're, you're overvalued for a start. So if we, if we were to make an offer, so uh, the valuation is, is, is crazy. Um, at the same time, I'm a fan, I'm not doing a predatory investment. I'm, I'm not out to own your business. I'm out for you to own your business and for you to get the disgustingly filthy rich and me to have a portion of that. That's, 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 that's the reality. Um, Look, we think we're your perfect cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all the money for 40% of the business. 40%? Yeah. Yeah. So basically what he's offering you is something we call seed capital. So he's basically saying, there's no business here yet, we're having a crack, there's a risk profile going forward for him and he'll put the money in off you go on a journey. Thank you, Steve. We would love to accept your offer. It's still settling in for us, I think, but just even to hear their feedback and to see that they believe in our product and that they love our product, it, it's really they great. They loved our product. Yay! Steve, Steve, that's a healthy product. What are you going to do? They are fantastic. Fabulous girls. Oh, Fabulous girls. Good product, great people.